Today we're going to be hacking on Elastos, specifically Carrier in Trinity. Let's go! Hey guys, welcome back, and today in this video we're going to look at hacking or reverse engineering Elastos, specifically Trinity and Carrier. So you've seen the Reddit posts and you've seen all of the blog posts that sort of go into some description about Elastos, Trinity and Carrier and Runtime, etc. And I really wanted to know a little bit more about it for myself from a technical perspective. And I have a feeling that a lot of you guys do too. So that's kind of the, you know, the basis for this video. Um, so Carrier is the, the network that all of the Elastos nodes connect to in order to communicate with one another. It is actually completely separate from the blockchain. So Carrier is much like the Elastos internet of sorts, whereas uh, the blockchain is really for trust and identity and commerce and those sorts of things. So we only use the blockchain for certain parts. Um, in Trinity, you might also hear referred to as the Elastos runtime. And in reality, they're one and the same. See, about 18 years ago or so, Elastos started as an operating system development initiative. So they were creating a lot of C++ code in order to bootstrap a device at the operating system level. And now uh, we have all of these mobile devices and things out there. It's not really feasible to create an operating system that's right on top of that. So instead, what they're trying to do is actually make something that runs on top of Android and iOS, which is actually where Trinity or the Elastos runtime comes in. So Trinity at its core is actually a Chromium browser, which is the open source fork of Chrome. And uh, it basically has all of its HTTP innards removed that disallow it from communicating with the internet as we know it today, and instead has hooks that are actually built in for carrier. So that is actually the core of Trinity. And then layered right on top of that, you actually have uh, React Native applications, more specifically the Ionic mobile framework that allows you to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and specifically the React framework, in order to actually have a native style presentation mobile app. But everything runs in the context of Trinity. So once you download Trinity to your phone, you can actually run other applications inside of it, which will communicate with the Elastos blockchain and the carrier network consequently. So if we take a look here, um, you guys probably saw the smartphone demo that was kind of floating around YouTube, which showed a video of Elastos running on a mobile phone. What you actually saw was the Trinity Smart Web Alpha, which is actually a part of the Cyber Republic GitHub repository. Believe it or not, Trinity is not open source at this moment because the team is trying to come up with a standard deployment pack and things like that. However, they have told me that they intend on open sourcing it very soon. But it's an APK, so it's actually an Android package, which means that we can actually download and reverse engineer it. So what we actually did was we downloaded this Trinity APK right here that is highlighted from the Cyber Republic Smart Web Alpha repository. And uh, effectively, once we ran it in an emulator, we got something very akin to this. You see a couple of demo apps, a wallet app, to-do list, etc. These things that are kind of demoing parts of interaction with the uh, Elastos SPV or wallet, um, you know, a to-do list, and, and some generic things that would interact with Carrier. But the interesting piece is once you actually get down to the code. So if we flip over to our code screen, we actually did decompile the, uh, the APK. And once you actually decompile the APK, you get a bunch of Java class files. And the way that Java is constructed is that there are certain bytecode instructions that really map to a single line of code or, or multiple instructions can map to a single line of code. So it fairly cleanly decompiles, which actually is what generated this code here. And we used a tool called JADX to do that. It's a free open source thing. You can also find an online decompiler. And really, we just took the Trinity APK, drug it into here. Um, so looking at some of the innards of the Trinity stack, we do see a couple of things. We do see the, the Ella wallet here. Uh, that is all the Java code that basically powers the, the Elastos wallet. That is a part of Trinity. So the code is indeed real. Um, it is actually working with Carrier. 
uh, you actually do have a, uh, a carrier, uh, you actually do have a carrier plugin here. So if we actually run to Elastos carrier inside of the org repository, we actually have the carrier JNI wrapper, which basically talks to the carrier C SDK that's available on GitHub. Um, we have all of the basic functions, friend lists, uh, presence, uh, all of the basic stuff that you need in order to actually sit on top of the carrier network. Now, it's worth noting that carrier is actually a fork of Tox, T-O-X, uh, almost in its entirety. Um, they have layered some things on top which allow for nice, like, reliable session transports over UDP, um, you know, the exchange of files, and, and, and sort of the, uh, the protection layer, the no-spam layer that only allows friends or approved third parties to communicate with your carrier node. This is actually what's running on all of those millions of TV boxes that are out there in China. Um, unfortunately, right now, they're only using it for uh, remote control access. Uh, so basically, your phone has a carrier app on it, and it's communicating through the carrier network to your TV box, if you can get one. Um, so yeah, we've got that going here. We've also got uh, Chromium. So again, Chromium, they are using that here uh, locally to display all of the web views and really kind of serve as the basis for Trinity. Uh, Trinity is, is pretty much uh, directly built on top of Chromium and React Native. Now, of course, if we look at uh, our assets folder, we're actually going to see a, a couple of different things. We're going to see these EPK files. And these EPK files are basically kind of like zip files, but uh, for um, Elastos packages. And they actually contain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript um, applications for use with Trinity, um, or with the Elastos uh, system, uh, if you will. So we do see all sorts of uh, other, other pieces here. We've got the barcode scanner, most likely for the Ella wallet. You actually need to be able to scan QR codes, so that actually would definitely come into use here. Um, the app manager, this is actually what enables launching of desktop type applications from the Elastos home, or from the Trinity home screen that we just showed you. Um, so indeed, um, you, can, you can look at this code as well. It's available freely. They will be releasing it, as they said, they will be releasing it open source, so you won't need to do all of this stuff, and hopefully we'll be able to get some um, documentation wrapped around it. Um, so that's actually the state of the carrier code. It is all uh, pretty, pretty well packed, um, but it's very early. So I uh, can't wait to see where that goes. Um, now, moving on from that, we're actually going to um, look at some reverse engineering efforts I did with Carrier. I was very um, curious about the state of the Carrier network, because again, it's based on TOX, T-O-X, which is a project that's been around for a while, which aims to create a decentralized communication mechanism really for chat, audio, video type stuff. They're kind of forked off as a Skype competitor. Um, but um, Elastos is using that baseline for its distributed hash table. And basically, the way that a distributed hash table works uh, is it's the same exact implementation that BitTorrent uses for their trackerless magnet links and all that kind of stuff. Uh, is it's basically organized in a ring. Um, and all of the nodes uh, are basically connected um, to, to other nodes, but um, if you want to send a message to a node that's completely on the other side of the network, it will be routed through that decentralized network in order to get there. So you can actually talk to peers even if you're not directly connected. Um, so one of the things I was curious about, one was what does the relative composition look like of the network? So how many nodes are there? And um, so kind of where are they geographically speaking? And the results are kind of astounding. Um, it, it really is uh, kind of interesting. So what I did is I forked the Elastos Carrier SDK and I wrote a crawler and spun it up and immediately, it started indexing hundreds and, and then thousands of nodes. And I let it run for about a day. And it sampled about 21,000 nodes, which means that I could probably optimize it. But out of those 21,000 nodes, here are some of the results. I indexed basically the node IP, the port, public key, basically things that are pertinent to Carrier. And then I also indexed where that node is located based on its IP address. So I kind of wanted to see where on earth are these nodes and kind of where who is rapidly or, or really, um, really invested in the carrier network. So who are those participants and what are they doing? 
Um, so again, um, about a random sampling of 21,000 nodes. Um, and uh, basically, they're, they're all in China. Um, actually, of about 21,000, about 20,800 and change are in China. The other, um, <laughs> the other thousand or so are basically spread out across other jurisdictions, but pretty much 99.999% of them are in China, which does make sense considering that that's where the mass influx of TV boxes and everything else is um, about the Elastos carrier network. So that's where we're seeing the most adoption. Now what that tells me though, is one, either my code is horribly wrong, which I don't suspect, although it, again, it could be improved. Um, that shows me that really we need to get widespread adoption of Elastos, specifically with those carrier nodes, really kind of upticking. Now, this has nothing to do with the Elastos coin uh, or currency or anything like that. As a matter of fact, we do need to step up the adoption of this technology. So what I really would like to see are embedded or IoT devices using carrier to communicate in a mesh network uh, or something like that because that will give us extra density on the Elastos carrier side. And uh, in reality, that will kind of hopefully galvanize enormous excitement with developers in the US uh, and of course abroad. Um, but it, it does seem that most of the Elastos carrier nodes are in China. Now I did do a breakdown of the IP addresses and most of them are indeed on ADSL or dynamic IP addresses. They're not hosted in Amazon EC2 or anything like that. So it does indeed point to kind of legitimizing that whole movement with the TV boxes. Now the TV boxes are running carrier. I do not believe the TV boxes are in carrier bootstrap node, uh, but uh, as far as the TOX protocol is concerned, every node can be used as a bootstrap node. The difference between Elastos carrier bootstraps and TOX bootstraps are that Elastos carrier nodes also operate stun and turn servers in order to circumvent NAT firewalls. Uh, to basically facilitate connections for people that are behind NATs. Um, anyway, that about concludes this episode as a look at Elastos Carrier. Again, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to see any other videos. Uh, sorry about the delay. It's been crazy. I'm working on a bunch of uh, Elastos stuff behind the scenes that I can't wait to share with you. There's a lot of stuff in the works here, so please stay tuned. And again, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the next one.